Um, I couldn't eat solid food. I couldn't swallow pills. Like I was liquid diet only. I couldn't talk. I could barely breathe. Couldn't walk. Couldn't stand unassisted. Uh, yeah, I was in, I was in pretty bad shape. So, you know, I was in a lot of pain all the time and mm. I had con constant gut issues. Hello everybody. Today I'm speaking with, uh, Mr. David Reed and he's got a great story. Uh, and a quite an inspiring story that we're going to talk about in a second, but he's Canadian. And, um, so I have some very Canadian questions to ask first before we get on with the interview. <laughs> um, but first I want to say my disclaimer, I think Canadians are awesome. Canadians are such nice people. Uh, you know, everyone, I, every Canadian I've met has just been very cool and loving. So I'm happy to talk to Dave today and tell him he's Canadian. And I love that. <laughs> okay. So, but here, uh, first, is it true that all Canadians ice fish? Well, I don't know about all Canadians, but I've certainly done some ice fishing. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I've caught a lot of trout through the ice. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it is it dangerous, though, like cutting a hole in a piece of ice and like standing there waiting for the fish to, to bite on the line? Uh, well, I mean, it can be if you don't have enough sense to make sure the ice is thick enough before you go out on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, have you ever fallen into the ice water? No. Oh. No. I mean, I've deliberately jumped it. Like I did, I've done uh, like a polar bear plunge. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah, it, it's not something I would normally do. It's just, it was like a, a, a fundraiser thing for, uh, for Santa's Anonymous. So, uh, <laughs> were you, yeah. were you a Santa? Uh, I've, I've been known to look like Santa from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. I had, uh, when I was first diagnosed with, um, with one of the autoimmune diseases I have, they had to, they had to shave me to, uh, put a central line in, in my, um, carotid artery. Oh, and, wow. uh, the nurse, she was like, I feel so guilty. I feel like I'm shaving Santa Claus. Because <laughs> I, I had like a big bushy white beard at the time and long hair, long curly hair. Hey, that that yeah. same photo is on your uh, YouTube channel, I think. On your, uh, or you have a yeah, long haired, uh, bushy, long beard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, I might, there might be a video true of me where I'm a little, a little fuzzier, which is where the. Fu oh yeah. That was a question coming up. The fuzz. Yeah, that, fuzzy. That's where the nickname comes from. Fuzzy D. Because and, of, uh, of the, of the beard and the fuzzy hair. Yeah, I mean, you've only seen a mild version of it. I mean, there was a time that I had hair almost to my waist. Oh, wow. And I had like a big, big bushy beard out to hair. Is it true that all Canadians play hockey? All Canadian men play hockey? <laughs> uh, no. No. Oh, okay. okay. Those are um, my two Canadian I mean, questions, my stereotyped Canadian questions. <laughs> I've, I've played field hockey. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I mean, I've tried to play ice hockey, but, uh, you know, I mean, I've had a, I've skated with a stick and a puck but I wouldn't exactly call that hockey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a couple sports I was pretty decent at. Hockey was definitely not one of them. Uh, <laughs> I was good at rugby and I was, I was actually pretty good oh, at rugby. Um, like Dr. Chapey. Yeah. Yeah. Him, him and I would get along great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I did one year at private school and that's where I, I uh, got introduced to rugby and uh, it turned out I was pretty good. I mean, I was, I was big and so I, I did, did very well at rugby. And I'm a very mediocre soccer player, or I was <laughs> at one point, very mediocre. Very mediocre, probably <laughs> probably better than me. <laughs> okay, yeah. so those are all the goofy questions out of the way. Now, I was looking at your YouTube channel, and you mentioned, I believe, uh, that you were 540 pounds at one point. Was that your was that your highest? Yeah, I was like 540.4 uh, pounds at my heaviest. Wow. And uh, I'm I'm six foot three, by the way. Thanks. So, yeah, I wanted to see I mean, it, figure that out. It's still big. It's still that's still yeah. Low I mean, even if you're six a, a tall person can carry more weight, but not that much more. I know. <laughs> back in my twenties, like I mean, I, I've struggled with weight all my life. Yeah. And, but back in my twenties, I got serious about really losing the weight, and so I, I started working out at the gym a lot. I got a mountain bike and started riding bike. And I mean, at one point, I was probably riding about uh, oh. 120 kilometers a week. Oh, wow. What's that? I was in miles? working out at the gym like five or six days a week, usually three hours of workout. Oh, wow. And I didn't have that. You know, I got to a point where I didn't have all that much body fat. I was driving tow truck for, for some of that time. And uh, so I was uh, working hard. You know, I mean, a yeah. lot of times I'd go, I'd go out on, uh, on uh, repos or impound runs and, and I'd have to, there, there's a technique we learned to, to move a car by ourselves. Like if we couldn't hook onto it because it's in a weird spot. Yeah. So you can actually, it, normally it's two guys, but I got to where I could do it by myself. So you, you start bouncing the suspension and then every time 
the suspension bounces enough to bring the wheels off the ground, you move it a little bit and then you can, yeah. you can, we used to, we, as practice, two of us would move vehicles across the wrecker yard back and forth to. Oh, wow. To <laughs> you were very in technique. shape. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was in good shape. And then, um, then the autoimmune stuff started hitting, but I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew that my neck started getting really sore. And when I would try and ride, ride my mountain bike, um, just the act of being bent over the handlebars and tilting my head up mm -hmm. to look, um, started running shooting pains down my arms and my hands would go numb and I had, had to stop, had to stop oh, riding. No. And, then, and this was in your twenties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, late twenties. And you know, once I started getting sick, then I started putting the weight on because all, you know, all this time I was just eating really crap food. You know, I sure. was like very much a, uh, I was very much a donut connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you know, Tim Hortons was my Mecca. <laughs> Tim Hortons was your Mecca. That's hilarious. Yeah, Tim that, that's like, like our, donuts? yeah, that's like our version of Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy oh, Kreme. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. Krispy Kreme. Oh, no. <laughs> Did, yeah, those, those and Blizzard. Oh, which one? Blizzards? Uh, Dairy Queen Blizzards. Oh, man, yeah, Dairy Queen. That was another big one. Yeah. We have great restaurants, great places to uh, <laughs> frequent in the United States and in Canada. Oh, when you would eat these donuts, by the way, I'm just curious, like, would your stomach hurt afterwards? Uh, no, I mean, I, when I was eating all this, uh, well, I mean, at, at first, you know, I, I did, I wasn't having issues with pain and stuff, but as I started getting sicker, um, I started having a lot of, a lot of pain. Uh, like I've got eight autoimmune diseases and, uh, oh, wow. one of them is osteoarthritis. So you know, my joints were always swollen and painful and they get like, you know, kind of red and hot. And, um, I also had some issues with my back. I had like three discs in my back that had been damaged when I was younger. Oh yeah. I mean, um, so the, the, the whole thing I was getting to is that, you know, I was in a lot of pain all the time and mm. I had caught, constant gut issues, you know, nasty cramps. And, mm. and I, I go from, well, a lot of the time it was, it was diarrhea and, uh, lots, lots of bleeding from, mm. from the, right. my bottom and, yeah. uh, yeah, just all, all kinds of, of nastiness going on. So, you know, and I, that started I, when? I'm sorry, when did that start? Uh, well, actually I used to have issues with, with, uh, cramping and bleeding right when I was, oh, probably 11 or 12 years old. Oh, wow. But, wow. uh, we always attributed it to like, I was, when I was eight years old, I was sexually abused by a foster brother. I'm sorry. So we, we just kind of assumed that, that mm. the bleeding and cramping was, was because of damage mm -hmm. done from, from that experience. I'm so sorry. Uh, not, not realizing that it probably had nothing to do with that, that it was mm -hmm. that, you know, even back then I was having serious allergies to food. Like my main, you know, the main autoimmune disease that had me bedridden for 10 years is, is called myasthenia gravis. And I was actually diagnosed with that initially when I was 13. And, and, and I don't know what that is. Can you explain? Oh, okay. I don't know what it is or somebody else that's listening doesn't know what that is. Yeah. So myasthenia gravis causes severe muscle weakness. And it does this through a mechanism of, you know, the autoimmune system. It seeks out a chemical called acetylcholine. Okay. And acetylcholine is what our nerves use to communicate with our muscles. Hmm. So it's, it seeks out this acetylcholine and it destroys it. Oh. So then we don't have the necessary chemical for our nervous system to communicate with our muscles. That's and, crazy. And yeah, it, it's a very serious disease. If left untreated, it is invariably progressive and fatal. Oh, and wow. And so, so you had this from 11 until uh, well, no, the, years the, ago? The, the, the bleeding stuff started when I was like... Oh, 11, okay. Yeah, my senior gravis, I was 13. And then my mom took me to a naturopath down on uh, in Victoria on Vancouver Island, which is in British Columbia. On the other side. And, yeah. On the um, West Coast. <laughs> yeah, West Coast, yeah. Yeah. And he put me on a very restrictive diet and oh. prescribed, prescribed, like I was taking handfuls of vitamins every day. And I did that for six months yeah. and uh, I went into full remission and oh. that remission lasted almost 30 years. Oh, wow. He did and, a good job then. Yeah, he did, he did a good job. And um, what did he have you eat out of curiosity? Cause you said it was very I don't, restrictive. I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I, just curious. If I, it was like I, kind of carnivore with vitamins. Uh, uh, you know, it, it could be like, I know that I wasn't allowed to eat bread. Mm. Um, there was these, uh, these little, um, rice cracker things that I could have. 
um, but yeah, I wasn't allowed, wasn't allowed any, any wheat products, mm. um, basically anything with gluten. I, I wasn't allowed that. And, and there was a bunch of other restrictions. I, I just remember always complaining about what I was allowed to eat, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And, uh, that, that last, that lasted a good long time, but, um, it, it's funny too, because when I was initially, there was actually my martial arts instructor that spotted it. Um, mm. he, I guess he had a nephew. I think it was a nephew that had mycenae gravis. So he recognized the signs. You know, I went from, I had been a really good student and was progressing very quickly. And all of a sudden I, I couldn't balance and I, I, I lost power, power to my punches and kicks and stuff. So um, oh, he, he told my mom, take him to the doctor. I think this is what he's got. Have him checked for this disease. And so the family doctor confirmed it but it was going to be six months before I could see a specialist. So while we were waiting to see the specialist, uh, my mom took me to this doctor on Vancouver Island. And so by the time I saw the specialist, I was in full remission. So his conclusion wasn't that this other doctor had figured out how to put this disease in remission. His conclusion was that the doctor was wrong and that I never had my senior grouse. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, you know, and then, you know, I started getting the, and I had problems with arthritis, uh, like in my knees and stuff growing up. I had a yeah. lot of problems with my knees. My knees would get all swollen up. And, uh, sometimes I couldn't walk for, you know, a couple of weeks kind oh, of a wow. thing. and, uh, that, that, you know, I, I had problems with that off and on. Um, they diagnosed me with something called chondromalacia patelli, which is just basically the underside of the kneecap gets really rough, causes friction and creates a fluid buildup, which oh. makes pressure and causes the pain. Is that also autoimmune or is that just, I have no idea. Another thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, they didn't say, um, they, oh, they didn't wow. mention it. But I, I don't know that it is or it isn't. So. Oh, okay. And yeah. so, uh, uh, you mentioned you had you were diagnosed with eight different autoimmune conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So we covered the myasthenia gravis. What were what are the other ones? So yeah, there's myasthenia gravis. There's uh, osteoarthritis. There's ankylosing spondylitis. What does that mean? A... If you want to give a brief <laughs> definition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the ankylosing spondylitis. It, it in my particular case, it it causes issues with my back, so it can cause the uh, back to curve in odd ways. Mm, um, okay. I, it's not really like spina bifida, but some of the, some of the things can, can be similar. Um, okay. I think it, it's more at the joint level in the back that it's, that it's causing this. Oh, wow. And then I've got, uh, Sjogren's disease, which causes, um, abnormal bone growth. Oh, and, uh, I've also got something called stenosis, which is another, uh, causes weird bone growth. The osteoarthritis also causes, um, so, you know, r roughness and, and, um, like kind of spiky buildup and stuff in my back. So I've actually got a lot of issues with my back that I'm yeah. dealing with. I mean, even though the autoimmune diseases are in remission, you know, I've got this permanent damage that's been done. So I'm actually, oh. um, I'm, and I'm dealing with a issue with my neck right now. The, the, uh, uh, Sjogren's disease and stenosis has created bone growth on the inside of my spinal canal. So oh, wow. C, C5 and C6 are uh, pinching the nerve. And so my right hand doesn't work very well. And oh, no. I got a lot of, a lot of numbness and weakness in this hand. And, yeah. Uh, Is that the hand you write with? Yeah. yeah oh man, right that's handed. rough. So. <laughs> that's, cool. that's hard. Uh, yeah, so there's... what are the other few? Uh, the other few audiomene issues? Let me see. Uh, I think I was at stenosis. So I've yeah. also got um, uh, eczema. Oh, okay. And uh, psoriasis. Okay. And uh, like a kind of a severe form of seborrhea. I don't know what seborrhea is, but I know that um, psoriasis or skin conditions. Well, imagine uh, imagine dandruff on steroids. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> so I, you know, I get like these thick scales in my in my scalp and stuff. Um, is and it painful? It, it, sorry. Is it painful, or is it just like the dandruff? It it can be. It it can it can crack and bleed, especially, you know, a lot of times I would get like, I'd have uh, the zebra and eczema and psoriasis all kind of inhabiting the same areas. So oh, my painful. entire, my entire face and scalp and neck and ears would break out. I would get it inside my ears sometimes. Oh, wow. And uh, sometimes that's I get it go on this elbow. I get it sometimes, but yeah. that's something I totally forgot to mention when we were talking on your channel is that my hand, this hand only, only this hand used to just, you know, get completely you can't see it now and I've got ink all over my finger by my pen on accident, but this would all be red, all red, all, some of it would be bleeding. And I tried everything, coconut oil. I tried a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, I always joke about the fact I don't happen, I happen not to have it here now, but it's like two bottles of steroid cream in case my hand would get inflamed. But yeah. by the way, eating this way, keeps it in remission. 
It's yeah. like, it doesn't yeah. look perfect. Like if you can see clearly, like you see the little lines, like I'm like a 90 year old thumb, but at least it's not bleeding and on fire anymore. <laughs> and it yeah, looks basically well, normal. So that, I understand. that's, that's huge. Yeah. Crazy. But if I go home and I go eat some McDonald's or I go eat junk food for a week, it'll be red again. It'll be inflamed. Yeah. Crazy. yeah if I, if I start using uh, seasonings, like if I yeah. used, uh, I can get away with it, you know, once or twice in a week. Right. Like if, you know, I could have a little garlic or maybe a little black pepper. Yeah. Uh, but if I eat it more than two days in a row, it starts triggering my eczema and it starts coming oh, back. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, uh, I used to be a, a, a big ginger ale freak. I used to drink ginger <laughs> ale all the time. And I was walking by a vending machine. <coughs> I looked in and I saw this ginger ale sitting there and it was the brand I used to drink. Oh, no. So I grabbed a ginger ale and I should have known when I took one drink and it was so sweet, I could barely swallow it. Cause mm. it, yeah, like, yeah. Was this Schweppes? It, it, no, it was, uh, um, Canada dry. Oh, Canada dry. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Stuff. <laughs> oh, of course. I still love that stuff also. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to, and I don't know why I continued to drink it. I didn't enjoy it. It was so sickening sweet. It was, it was oh, kind of disgusting. It's the corn but... syrup, the hypo hypo, what is it called? Uh, the high fructose corn yeah. syrup. Yeah. Sugar. yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it was that or if it was some of the other ingredients and preservatives that were in it, but in an hour, my feet started to swell and I could barely get my shoes on for three days. And oh, I was wow. in major pain in, in my feet and ankles. Wow. That was, yeah. We do this to ourselves. It's like a yeah, weird sort yeah, of do it to herself. And you know, torture that that's the first time I've deliberately cheated on this diet since i started i started oh, wow. uh, january 16th 2023 was day one for me and on and day one were you 540 pounds is that when you were no. 500? oh no, okay no. no i'd been doing keto for a few years off and on okay and uh so i had i had lost i think uh i think i'd lost about 150 pounds or 160 pounds by the time i started carnivore Oh, okay. And so, and now I've lost like a total of uh, about 220. Between um, keto and carnivore. Between keto and carnivore. Yeah. I've lost 220 pounds. I mean, but I've still, I've amazing. still got a ways to go. Yeah. It's, I've a, still got... it's a marathon, not a, not a sprint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've still got like another, you know, 75, 80 pounds to lose somewhere in there. Hey, sounds like me. No, if I lost 75 yeah. pounds, I would probably look not healthy. <laughs> I'd probably look the opposite of healthy. <laughs> um, can I ask a question? Like, and I don't want to seem rude, but like at 540 pounds, like, do you, do you need help to like take a shower? Like, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to understand well, a little bit like what life is like when you're that big. Most of the time I was that weight, I was bedridden. So like, mm -hmm. like I, I was bedridden. I was in a wheelchair for a few years when I first started getting sick. And then I was pretty much completely bedridden for 10 years. So I was in a wheelchair for about five years and then bedridden for another 10. Wait, wait, and but you're, you told me earlier that you're 58. So you started doing this at 56. So from 46 to 56, you were so like 46, you were in, in bed. Uh, yeah. It would have been, wow. yeah, let me see. I, I was by the time, let me see. I was pretty much bedridden by 2009. Oh, wow. And then in 2019, I started going through a process of getting off all the medications because so I was on like 19 prescriptions. And wow. A, wow. Lot of those, a lot of those prescriptions were for pain. Part of the pain from my lower back because I had three discs that were completely gone by that point. And um, I actually have a scan from, from 2019 that showed they were, they were completely gone, oh, like wow. a, a CT scan. And this, that's something that carnivore has healed. Those discs that's completely- crazy regenerated when i went for an mri in july of last year those discs were completely regrown and in perfect shape i cannot believe that that's yeah, unbelievable that, that's so that crazy blew me away when my doctor went over the results of the mri with me yeah. i was stunned because i was like well where's all the back pain coming from and then he showed me all this other stuff mm -hmm. in my back that had been caused by the arthritis that uh that causes a lot of pain in my back so oh my goodness i'm i but, just i'm just like I'm going to be 41 this year. So you were in your forties, like basically around my age and you were already in a wheelchair and you were bedridden. And now yeah. 15 years later or whatever, 
you are a total success story. You're not bedridden. You've lost 220 pounds and you rejuvenated spinal discs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's Absolutely. crazy. Yeah. I was, um, yeah, I started getting sick again in about 2006. I was noticing some weird stuff with my feet. And mm. then I had, then in 2007, I was having troubles initiating a swallow when I was eating and it's just oh, no. kind of, then it just kind of progressed from there. And by, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, so I was in, I started, uh, I was already, I was had so much pain with my back. I was already in a wheelchair a lot of the time at that point I could walk, yeah. but you know, if I had to go anywhere, any distance, uh, I needed a wheelchair. And then, uh, and then by 2009, I was pretty much fully bedridden. Although they didn't officially diagnose me with the Mycenae Gravis until 2012. Oh, okay. uh, here in Canada, we, we sometimes have some issues with, with uh, Medicare, um, mm -hmm. you know, like the government pays for everything, but sometimes the waiting right. lists, um, and they, you know, the, at first they thought I had MS and okay. they needed to send me for an MRI to confirm it. Mm -hmm. And I was so big that I couldn't fit Aww. in the MRI. So they had to find me a different MRI to go in. And the only one that was big enough at that time, when they were first trying to get me into one, uh, was down in Southern Alberta. But at that point in time, the, uh, the Alberta, uh, healthcare was divided into the North and the South. Mm. So they began a two year fight over who was going to pay for it. Oh no, that's so crazy. Meanwhile, so much I'm just for sitting universal there waiting. Healthcare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm sitting there waiting for diagnosis and they're fighting over who's going to pay for it. That's ridiculous. And it wasn't until there's a, there's a city that's right on the border between the North and the South and they built a new clinic there with an MRI that was big enough. Oh, so okay. They oh finally sent me there and then they, the results of that MRI were negative. I didn't have MS. Oh my but goodness. But by, by this time, um, I couldn't talk very well. I, I couldn't, uh, swallow very well. Uh, of course I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, walk or stand unassisted. And, oh, no. um, and yeah, so how, what happens? Does somebody come and like help you and make your food and like come and do like medical checks or how does that work when you're bedridden for 10 years? Well, my wife was my primary caregiver. Like okay. with her help, I could get out of bed and get to the bathroom. Um, if I wanted to take a, a shower, um, you know, of course, uh, like I had a, a wheelchair accessible apartment, so I had like a, a walk-in mm. shower and uh, okay. if I had to, I could have wheeled into the shower, but, um, we had a, a worker that would come in like a health healthcare worker. She'd come in a couple times a week to help me shower and, and that kind of a thing. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah, my, my wife pretty much looked after me. I spent about 14 to 16 hours a day sleeping all the medications oh, wow. and stuff. And oh my God. Can we get into that also? Was... Like, oh, first, I want to say your wife is a saint. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, she is. Oh, my goodness. And then How she, does she, she feel would... now that you are in incredibly better health? What are her, oh, her she, feedback? She was, she was pretty happy to start getting her husband back. Yeah, and, uh, I'm sure. I mean, we, you know, her being my primary caregiver and me being so sick for so many years yeah. certainly affected our relationship. You know, sure. we became more like, more like roommates than husband and wife. Yeah. Which kind of unfortunate. Um, one of the, th one of the side benefits of that leadership training that I did there, the four month training is, uh, she actually became my project re rebuilding intimacy with her. Oh, and, uh, that, that was, that was pretty awesome. We can't, we've come a long ways in, in rebuilding our relationship. I'm very happy so. about that. Marriage is work. <laughs> yeah. Marriage is yep. always, it's like a constant creation. Well, I mean, God sure found me the right woman to be married to. Um, Aww. you know, I've, I had prayed for a lot of years to find the right woman and I was led to the town that she lived in. Yeah. And I mean, we, yeah, once, once we went on one date, I knew she was the one that <laughs> was supposed that God had been leading me to. And right. we were, we were married three months later and that was Aww. 27 and a half years ago. So. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, That's awesome. She's absolutely an amazing woman. Um, she has been through so much with me. But, yeah. Um, yeah. And that, so, I mean, you know, my, my, basically my daily routine is once, um, once she could wake me up for a little while, then yeah. she'd help me get up and get out to the couch in the living room. And, uh, I'd sit out there and watch TV for, for a few hours and we do a little reading and then, uh, go back to bed. And that was kind of my, my daily routine. That was my existence. And uh, they had me on so many medications. Um, yeah. I was on like gigantic doses of time release morphine. So I was just oh my goodness. completely out of it. I, I was, um, having so many accidents in bed that, you know, we had to have rubber sheets and that kind of stuff. Oh my goodness. And, um, 
there was a period of time where I seriously contemplated suicide on more than one occasion. I and understand why that would be. What a terrible quality of life. And then you're on 19 medications on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, half of the medications were for side effects of the other half. It was <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's not yeah. laughing matter, but it is ridiculous. It's kind yeah. of is ridiculous. Oh, it, it, it is. It's insane. I mean, the doctors really had didn't have a lot of answers. Um, Right. You know, I'd had, I'd had a surgery done. Uh, they'd figured out that the Mycenae gravis in my particular case was caused by a gland called the thymus. It's so, in the, the brain, the thymus? No, actually, actually it lives just above the heart. Oh, okay. Okay. And it, um, it's supposed like, it's what builds your immune system when you hit puberty. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. It, it cranks up and builds your adult immune system. And then once you're, once you get out of puberty, it, that it's supposed to basically go dormant. Okay. Oh, uh, and yours didn't. mine, mine didn't No, okay. and, and matter of fact, mine, what did they call it? I think they said it fractionated. Basically it, it cloned itself, split into several of them. So I had like three or four thymuses. Oh, and, wow. Strange. Yeah, so that, that, yeah. And that's why I got so sick so fast. But mm. by the time I was diagnosed in 2012, officially, um, I couldn't eat solid food. I couldn't swallow pills. Like I was just liquid diet only. I couldn't talk. I could barely breathe couldn't walk, couldn't stand unassisted. Uh, yeah, I was in, I was in pretty bad shape. So they, uh, they actually pulled off a minor miracle. Like when they officially diagnosed me, they put me straight into, um, into the hospital and they did a, a series of treatments called plasmapheresis. So basically the part of my immune system that was seeking out and killing the acetylcholine lives in the plasma of the blood and, and the lymphatic system. So what they did is they, they did this plasmapheresis. So basically they, they put a central line in through my neck that came down to just above the heart. So it had like an inner and outer tube. So they could pump the blood out to the machine, separate out the plasma, replace it with artificial plasma, mix it back together, pump it back to my heart. Oh my so goodness. I, basic, I basically had a full oil change several times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so, they, uh, so they, they did that. And by the time they were done the fifth series of treatments, um, I could walk, I could talk, I could eat, I could, oh, wow. I could swallow, you know, it, it was, it was amazing the difference it made, but sure. it's it short lived. It only lasts a few months. Mm -hmm. So what they did is, you know, they'd done the CT scans, discovered the thing with my thymus and because I was so big, they couldn't go in laparoscopically. So mm -hmm. they had to actually do a, the same kind of procedure as if they did open heart surgery. Oh, wow. So, you know, they had to cut me right down the middle, <laughs> rib, spreader, rib spreaders and the whole nine <gasps> yards. And, uh, yeah, so they, they had me op opened up like a fish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, now, and that, I, that helped I, to stabilize me enough that the medications could keep me stable. Okay. But the, I, I couldn't really get much better. Um, okay. Than, than that and, until I started doing some other stuff. So it was, uh, it was late 2018 when I decided that, okay, I can't live like this anymore. I've got to do something. Right. So, uh, in, I think it was January of 2019. I decided, okay, first thing I've got to do is get off all the opioids. So I, I had right. been on, on, uh, I was actually taking something called hydromorph, which is like a concentrated morphine. It's, it's about halfway between morphine and fentanyl. Oh no. Strength. Oh no. That's yeah, so crazy. It was like, the, it was the precursor to fentanyl basically. Wow. So I was on that for, oh, well, I was on the full blown hydromorph for probably 12, 12, 13 years. And then before that I was on, um, Oxycontin. Oh no. And, um, uh, I, than that, um, oh, okay. it, it just basically, it, it took away my ability to think and it took away my memory most of the time. Oh um, no! I would watch a TV show or a movie and the next day I could watch it again. It was like, I'd never seen it. Oh, wow. And That's I was, crazy. I was, I was forgetting parts of myself, you know, a lot of bits and pieces of who I was, what my history was. Couldn't remember large, large chunks of it. No mental acuity. I couldn't think straight. And, I mean, I understand the, that, yeah. but that's very, it's so sad. That makes me want to cry. Actually, that's mm -hmm. terrible. So your goal was first get off the opioids. How did you do that? Yeah. I just started tapering down. Like I had gone to my doctor and I said, look, I want to get off, yeah. uh, off the morphine. I've, I've got to get off of this stuff. And he didn't want to do it. He wouldn't help me at first. Oh, wow. He, he was like, well, no, he says, we can't take you off of it. You'll just be in too much pain. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to handle it. So, uh, you know, I started doing, and that was actually late 2018. I talked to him about that. Yeah, and he basically refused to help, and so I started doing some research of alternative things I could do to deal with pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once I I 
had to study it over and over and over before I could even remember any of it. And so I started tapering down on my own. Okay. And once I'd, once I'd been tapering down for about six months and you could see that I was dead serious, that I wasn't going to stop. Yeah. And I had actually gone and got it. And they didn't, um, I'm glad they didn't put you on methadone. <laughs> no, like, I, I refused. What I is refused that? that? Jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> yeah. That was actually, that was on the table as an offer. And I, I was like, ah, no, thank you. I'm just, yeah. I'm doing this straight. I'm coming, tapering off. And now I can't get any smaller doses because of the size of pills I, I, that are in my prescription. I can't go any lower. So okay. I need you to prescribe me different pills. And okay. at that point, he saw I was serious. that I wasn't going to stop. So at that point, he, he prescribed me. He set me up with a plan and new prescriptions so I could finish tapering off. So it took about nine months total time to come off of the morphine safely. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. How crazy. Um, and during yeah. this time, did you start your keto journey, your keto, your yes. healthier way of eating? Okay. Yeah. That, that's when I started the keto. And uh, I actually, I initially started, before I started the keto diet officially, I had started with a, a supplement called keto. <laughs> and okay <laughs> <What's that? laughs> yeah it what it was it was um it was designed to to uh bulk kind of bulk fill your stomach as well yeah. as ra raise your um uh put you in ketosis okay interesting yeah, so it, it was meant to do both and it okay. seemed to work i started losing weight with that oh, and wow. then uh, my wife and i once i started getting clear-headed enough um, yeah. part of the research i was doing was leading me to vitamins and supplements no nowadays um, i don't have a lot of pain sometimes the pain will flare you know i'm doing a lot of activity like yeah. i do a lot of walking now so um, i saw that on your youtube channel you're doing little shorts outside walking which yeah. is incredible considering that you were in a wheelchair and bedridden for 10 years i just keep wanting, yeah. keep wanting to like reiterate that for people like <laughs> this guy was in his 40s in bedridden and in a wheelchair i'm in my 40s like eat the right food people oh no <laughs> yeah right exactly, food, exactly like, right get the right amount of sleep um, so, yeah, i mean the, the day that i was able to take my wheelchair back yeah or return it actually my wife took it back to be honest but okay. um the, the, the day, day the wheelchair went back yeah. yeah the day the wheelchair went back that was a big day but an even bigger day was when we finally moved out of the wheelchair accessible apartment and into a normal place yeah that was for me that was that was a huge leap forward in just my whole mental state mm -hmm. and, you know my, just my whole state of being oh that i love was, that. Uh, that that was huge That's and awesome. you know to think i mean you know back 2019 i was bedridden and you know now i can I, you know i go for uh you know little little longer than two kilometer walks a few times a week you no know, nowadays um, i don't have a lot of pain sometimes the pain will flare you know if i'm doing a lot of activity like yeah. i do a lot of walking now so I saw that on your YouTube channel. You're doing little shorts outside walking, which yeah. is incredible considering that you were in a wheelchair and bedridden for 10 years. I just keep wanting, yeah. to, keep wanting to like reiterate that for people. Like <laughs> this guy was in his 40s in bedridden and in a wheelchair. I am in my 40s. Like eat the right food, people. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right, exactly like, right. Get the right amount of sleep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the day that I was able to take my wheelchair back, yeah. or return it. Actually, my wife took it back to be honest. But okay. um, the, the, the day, day the wheelchair went back. Yeah. yeah, the day the wheelchair went back. That was a big day, but an even bigger day was. Um, yeah. Okay, so we were talking about your meds. I'm just curious, what other medications were you on? So your most of your half of your medications were pain medications. Is that what you were saying? Uh, well, no, I was just half the meds were for side effects. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. So I was on Hydromorph. I yeah. was on Dilaudid, which were both painkillers. I was on something called Lyrica, which was for the, like, I've got peripheral neuropathy in my feet. Okay. So the, uh, the peripheral neuropathy, uh, it causes numbness, but it also causes burning pain. Like that's about all you can feel. Oh, wow. Is like Strange. this constant burning pain. Yeah. Now that since I got on carnivore, that the burning pain is gone. That, oh, wow that went away but the wow. numbness is, is still there but it, my feet are you know nerve damage heals so very slow okay but <laughs> i i do have a little bit of feeling in parts of my feet and wow I don't know if, that's I, I don't know if, oh yeah yeah it's huge I, I remember the day i was sitting there i'd been about eight months carnivore and i was sitting on a chair with my feet up and his cat walks under un, under my feet and i felt its tail go across the bottom of my feet and i was like oh <gasps> <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. Yay. oh my gosh oh my gosh yeah. i understand yeah so, wow yeah, that was a, that, was, that so, was a pretty big deal that's a big deal so you've been doing carnivore for like two years now um well yeah i started uh january 16th 2023 so i'd be what about 16 months or almost 16 months 15 and a half months or something nice right now, and so. basically all eight of the autoimmune issues that we were talking about earlier have gone into remission now Pretty much. Um, Pretty much. I still get the odd flare of eczema if, if, okay. if I get if I get stressed or mm. if I eat, you know, eat spices or something, then that'll that'll flare. But most of the time it's it, it's quiet now. The nice. other ones all seem to be in full remission. I don't have I don't have issues with the other ones. That's so. awesome. And one more yeah. time, you're no longer bedridden you, as you were yeah, for 10 no years. Bedridden. No longer no in a wheelchair. <laughs> no medications. Um, zero. I mean, some of the zero. other Oh, yeah. Uh, they also had me, there was another painkiller called Wellbutrin, but it's, it's like, like a, a combination. Bed, by the way. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a combination painkiller yeah. antidepressant. And I was on like <laughs> no. three different kinds of antidepressants. Oh, wow. And 
that's they, they, I, I just refused to take the bipolar medication because I, I hated what it what it did to me. So, yeah, we were we didn't actually cover that. We, we you mentioned mental health a little bit, but can you tell me like from the beginning of your keto and carnivore journey, like what your mental health was like at the beginning and how where it is now <laughs> yeah. from your perspective? Well, I was, yeah, I was I was 19 when I was diagnosed with actually back then it was called manic depressive. Um, yeah. But, now it's called bipolar more anti the people putting labels and not having a real solution for people so please go yeah. ahead please tell yeah. me what bipolar is yeah basically i i would get you know one day i would be i'd feel like superman i was on top of the world i could do anything i had had all these huge dreams and big ideas and like you know all these things that i could accomplish and then you know Later that day or, or a couple of days later, I would go into a deep depression, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a suicidal depression that would last for days, sometimes weeks. I'd been doing um, to deal with the, with the depression and the bipolar is I had actually found a natural supplement called Empower Plus. And it was actually invented um, by friends of mine, people that I knew from church. Oh, wow. And they they figured out the the formula, um, the woman that was involved in it, like it was a husband and wife team. Yeah. And his wife, um, uh, she had, uh, uh, bipolar and her, her own mother had committed suicide and so sad. Like it, she, she had it way worse than I did. So they, they figured out this, uh, empower plus formula and, and what, it's actually what a one of it? the, Oh, I don't know all the stuff that's in it. It's like, it's a pretty complex formula. But, but it's um, like vitamins and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's like vitamins and minerals. It's oh, okay. A, it's a very specific mix. They actually brought in, um, they did randomized control trials. They had oh, wow. big, long studies done. It's actually one of the most researched natural supplements on the planet. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it, it helps with all types of, of uh, mental uh, disorders. Um, uh, it's pretty successful with schizophrenia and depression and bipolar and that kind of thing. It's pretty, um, pretty amazing. And then they came out with a new product based on it called lightning sticks. So it was <laughs> that sounds very it, fun. Yeah. Well, basically like the, uh, the empower plus pills, you know, it was like a capsule or a tablet that you had to take. Um, and it would take a while to kick in. Like, you know, if you were having, a bit of a flare and you took it to settle it down it would take take a while right sure. so they developed these lightning sticks and it was basically a, a powder in a little in a little tube do you remember the the candy we had as a kid called pixie sticks yeah yes what a terrible yeah, I, I, sorry i'm looking at it online the empower plus i'm trying to see what's in it so it, it was like a giant pixie stick and <laughs> you just you dump that in your mouth put it under your tongue and let it dissolve and yeah. it, it would kick in in like five minutes. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So I, I was using lightning sticks for, for quite a while to, to uh, s settle the bipolar. Mm. And that, that worked very well. Is it um, is the company called True Hope? Yes, that's the one. Uh, okay. Now yeah. this looks great. It has vi tons of great vitamins. A, C, D, yeah. bunch of B vitamins. Yeah, B vitamins yeah, they, are very good for your mind. Yeah, they, <laughs> they used to live here where I live and then yeah. they moved down, they moved down to the States. So they run the business out of, I think it's Idaho. Oh, okay. So nice. But, uh, I found it. They sell it on Amazon. I might have to try yep. this. This looks really good. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, the, the thing that I like, I, and I hadn't used it for a while. Uh, when I started carnivore, we were just, there was other vitamins that I was taking as well. And mm. we just, we could only afford so much. Sure. So I, understand. I had to, uh, I had to kind of give it up. So I started getting a little bit of the bipolar symptoms, uh, wasn't as bad. Like I wasn't getting suicidal anymore, but I was still having, you know, the ups, ups and downs. Okay. And I noticed after about four months on carnivore that, um, the symptoms were getting less and less. And then I didn't, and I just didn't think about it. And then I noticed that six months I realized, Hey, I haven't had any symptoms for a while. Wow. And that's, great. And, that, and that's, that's like a year ago. I haven't had a, a single, a single episode since. Wow. And, that's awesome. Um, I hope somebody who is diagnosed with bipolar listens to this. So what yeah. exactly were you eating to get those results? 
Well, basically, I'm I'm strict carnivore. Um, I only eat animal products. And I when I first started, I was eating some eggs, but I discovered that egg whites um, mm. give me cramps, so I, okay. I can't really tolerate them. So I I don't eat eggs anymore. I use egg yolks if I once in a while I'll make like a a a butter mayonnaise. Mm. So I use egg yolks in that. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's very yummy. That's why I don't it make sounds, it very often. It sounds too yummy. <laughs> I yeah, ate, that, that's the problem. <laughs> I think I ate 12 eggs yesterday. <laughs> I can eat eggs. <laughs> so I have no issues. Ba basically, I, I eat mostly red meat. I was eating, for the first few months, I was eating a lot of pork. Um, okay. We'd actually, we gotten a deal on buying a whole pig mm. and the, that we butchered. So we yeah. had like a freezer full of pork. So I was eating a lot yeah. of pork for a while, but I discovered after a while that I did better on beef than I did on pork. Okay. So I just, I just didn't feel as good on pork. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't eat, don't eat pork anymore. Once in a while, if my wife's having some bacon, I might have a few pieces, but other than that, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't eat pork anymore. So I eat probably 80% of what I eat is beef. Um, and 80% of that is usually ground beef, uh, okay. grass fed, grass finished. Great. And, um, there, and then other time, you know, I'll treat myself every so often to some, to some nice steak, you know, I like my ribeyes and I like my mm -hmm. New York strip and my favorite cut of beef though is picanha. It's <laughs> about the same tenderness as New York strip, but yeah. it's, it's the best flavor of any cut of beef that I've, mm. that I've ever tried. Yeah, it's I'm going to try that. I think it might be called churrasco. Okay. Uh, here. Sorry. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm just going to start speaking Spanish on you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, and I, I eat chicken. Like we, we buy, um, oh, okay. uh, I don't know if you've heard of Hutterites. They're no. kind of like, they're kind of like uh, halfway between Amish and Mennonite. Oh, okay. So they're, they're like Amish, but they, they use modern technology. So. Oh, uh, okay. Like but you eat good chicken. And, Oh, okay. Yeah, so we we get chicken from them. Um, we usually buy like a, a bag full of of chicken from them every so often. Nice. So I'll I'll spat cock a chicken and and uh, bake it in the oven. And yeah, I actually that was one of the that was one of the benefits of carnivore that my wife is really enjoying. Yeah. Because when I first started carnivore, she was very against it. She, yeah. you know, she'd you know she had all this stuff in her head that we all had about how sure. healthy an all meat diet is and yeah. that kind of thing. So she was not supportive at all when I first started. Oh, wow. And she said, I'm not going to cook two different meals because I'm not going to eat this way. So if you want to eat carnivore, you got to cook it yourself. So <laughs> I started I started cooking and then I started just taking over doing all the cooking. So nice. Now awesome. I, I do like 90% of the cooking now. So oh wow, she's, nice. she's pretty That's happy about that. Yeah, I'm sure. But I let her do Great. the dishes. <laughs> 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 that's awesome but, uh, so basically eating meat a little bit of pork once in a while and chicken yeah chicken okay. fish like i, oh, I, eat, fish. Okay. I eat salmon if yeah. so, if i i have a uh, one of my church friends uh every once in a while he'll go fishing and he'll drop off a couple of rainbow trout for me nice yeah. um so. so but basically that's basically it and yeah, and most of the mo most of the meat I eat is uh, other than the, the chicken and fish is uh, ruminant. So I, like I I'll eat uh, elk and moose mm. and deer. You know, moose, kind of that's an interesting one. Yeah. But oh, moose! Is I awesome. just wanted <laughs> to specifically specify the foods that you're eating that helped you to with these mental issues you were talking about, and you were able to get off of your psychiatric medications, from what yeah. I understand. And, and, lo and lots of fat and lots, lots of, of fat. fat and lots of yeah. like butter and tallow. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that other people could have similar results if they did the same thing? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the first, uh, one of the first people I coached because I do wellness coaching now. Right. Um, one, one of the first people I coached, uh, was somebody I met through one of the Mycenae Gravis groups. Okay. And she actually, she found my YouTube channel um, from, a, like I had made a post on, on one of the Mycenae Gravis groups and was talking about how I was, I was in remission and how I had done it. And so she searched up my name, she found my Facebook and then she found my YouTube channel. And then she managed to track, 
uh, she tracked me down, did a friend request, which I, I accepted. And then next thing I knew she was doing a, like a FaceTime chat on Facebook messenger from her hospital bed. Oh, wow. In, uh, she was in, um, uh, oh, what do they call that? Uh, the acute care ward. And, uh, so yeah, so she called me from her hospital bed and asked me a whole ton of questions. As soon as she got out of the hospital, she went carnivore and wow. she, she went in remission pretty quickly. That's amazing. You know? Well, I, <laughs> I used to, I used to be very uncomfortable when, when people would say, oh, you, you know, you're so strong, you've been through so much and I, it would make me really uncomfortable. I didn't feel I was kind of worthy of that yeah. acknowledgement, but yeah. I've come to realize that, um, God had a reason for me to go through this. Mm -hmm. And part of that reason was so that I could be taught so that I could learn empathy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, before I got sick, I was, you know, I, I was involved in a couple of companies. I was, uh, I was a CEO of a small internet company. We did like hosting and web design and online programming and stuff. And I was partners in another company where we were doing computer installations and repair and stuff. And I was very money focused and I was becoming very arrogant. I was really not mm -hmm. a nice person. And, oh, wow. um, I needed to be humbled mm -hmm. and the, you know, I, this, all the stuff I went through definitely humbled me. Sure. But I, I learned an awful lot and, you know, yeah, okay. I went through a lot, but I don't regret a single minute of it because it has taught me so much and it has given me so much in self-respect and empathy and understanding. And it's now given me the opportunity because I found healing. You know, mm -hmm. God led me to healing. And because of that, uh, I feel it's kind of my responsibility to, to help other people find that same healing. And I, I, be, I believe it, it's the purpose that God meant me to have. You know, it's like my true purpose mm -hmm. anymore. I'm not a victim. That's great. I, I'm just, I'm somebody that's, that's had an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to learn the things I need to help others. And that's, you know, not only can I help others, but I feel like I'm worthy to help others and worthy of the success that can come from that anymore. I'm not a victim. That's great. I, I'm just, I'm somebody that's, that's had an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to learn the things I need to help others. And that's, and that's awesome. that new perspective for my life has completely changed my vision. You know, when I first started helping people learn about this way of eating and heal, I, I thought that's as far as it would go, you know, just help a couple of people here and there. Mm -hmm. But now I have a different vision. I have a, a vision of helping millions of people recover from these horrible diseases. There are millions of people that suffer like I was from autoimmune diseases of all different kinds. Um, yeah. One of the first videos I did on my YouTube channel, I had a guy contact me with MS. Oh, wow. And he told me a really neat story about how he, he was only a few months away from dying. And he finally talked his caregiver into putting him on carnivore because he, he couldn't even brush oh, his wow. own teeth. He couldn't feed himself. He, oh, no. he was bedridden. He couldn't do anything. And, uh, Carnivore cured him in a year. That's he was crazy. in a year. He he was able to he was able to lay off his care worker, do everything for himself, and he's completely healed. Oh my and gosh! That, that MS is pretty serious. It's serious. Yeah. It's like it's uh, yeah. unreversible. Yeah. Just, exactly. uh, anything else? Any last words you'd like to say, or uh, anything you'd like to shout out before we end? Uh, sure. Um, on the screen there, you see the the address to my website, mm -hmm. and you can find all of my stuff there. I've got links to my YouTube channel and my Facebook stuff. I've got, I've got a, a carnivore coaching group. That's a private group. Oh. Um, and then I've also got, um, just like a, like a, I've got another channel called uh, fuzzy road to help, or it's like a Facebook page that's open to anyone who wants to, wants to look at it. And I belong to a ton of carnivore groups on Facebook. So, uh, world carnivore tribe, uh, Principia, Carnivore for Christians, uh, Carnivores for Christ um, are some of the main ones. Uh, there's a few keto groups I belong to as well, uh, post recipes and stuff on there and just general health information from time to time. Um, definitely want to check out my website. I've got a ton of information on there. It's pretty extensive and I'm adding to it all the time. Awesome. But, um, yeah. And I'm also, uh, I'm writing a couple of books. Um, one is basically my, my story of my healing journey. Great. And my working title at this point is just Fuzzy Road to Health. And earlier you uh, mentioned you want to help millions of people. And I really think you're going to yeah. do that. I really do. Just so you know, you got my uh, my agreement there. <laughs> well, I, I've learned the power of setting an intention, declaring that intention, and the universe just seems to show you how to accomplish it. You don't have to understand right. how to uh, decide to do something. 
start working on it and you can make it happen. <laughs> everything will yeah. align. If you're, the, if you're yeah, the, there, everything will the align. The universe just showed me how, or God showed me how, how however you want to look at it. I mean, yeah. you we showed are, how. yeah, we are made in the image of God and <laughs> right. you know, God has the power to speak things into existence. And so do we. Right. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. I really believe that um, if we learn ourselves and learn the best version of ourselves, so we can be more and more closer to that image. Yeah. If you're, the, if you're yeah, the, there, everything will. The align. universe just showed me how, or God showed me how, how, however you want to look at it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people look for miraculous healing, and I did for a long time too. And I came to realize, and actually, the for those of you who do read the Bible, um, the story of Lazarus demonstrates this if you know if you know what to look for that God expects us to do everything that we can do before he'll do what only he can do <laughs> I love that